number 97. Answer the following questions. And then we're at letter D. So in this one, it says the average temperature of the gas in the hot air balloon is 1.30 times 10 to the second degrees Fahrenheit. Calculate its density, assuming the molar mass equals that of dry air. So we found out the molar mass, which is mm, of dry air in part C, so the last part, uh, that was equal to 29.468 grams per mole. Now, in part A of this question, on 97A, we also discussed that the pressure of the hot air balloon is the same as the pressure of the atmosphere. So, in letter C, they did tell us that we had a pressure of 1 atm, but since the hot air balloon is at the same pressure as the atmosphere, I could also take that piece of information. Okay? So, let's now keep going. What else did they tell us? Well, they gave us a temperature value. So I have a, I have a T here. So temperature of 1.30 times 10 to the second degrees Fahrenheit. This is basically the same as 130 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So, and you know, that's basically the only number that they gave us extra and we have to calculate the density, right? So D, question mark. So molar mass, pressure, temperature, right? We should come up with the pressure formula, right? A, a gas formula. And that's the one that we used in part C. It was this one, right? PMM equals DRT. So we have the pressure, 1 atm. It was the same as the atmosphere. We now have the molar mass. They did tell us that it's going to be the same number. So I'm going to put 29.468 grams per mole. We're solving for that density, so I could label that as x. R is always that constant value, right? 0 0.0821, or if you want to put 0 0.0806, it really doesn't matter to me. Remember, this is the one that has all those crazy units. That's why this formula is very, very, very specific. Um, and then mole times Kelvin. And then the temperature here has to be in Kelvin. But uh-oh, they gave it to me in Fahrenheit. So the first thing I have to do is remember, to go from Fahrenheit to Kelvin, the easiest thing to do is get the degree Celsius. Then from there, you could get the Kelvin. So that's going all the way back to Chem 1. But I wrote the formula down here, right? Celsius just equals the Fahrenheit value minus 32 divided by 1.8. So instead of just putting a Fahrenheit value, I'm going to just say that the Fahrenheit was 130. So all we have to do, calc's out. Where's my calc? Here's my calc. So all I would have to do is just 130 minus 32 and then divide all that by 1.8. Seems like they, they started me off with three sig figs, but since this isn't really the final answer, we shouldn't really lock ourselves in too much. So I'm just going to say 54.4 degrees Celsius. And then from there, we could easily just convert to Kelvin, right? Celsius to Kelvin, all we do is plus 273. So plus 273. We'll say 327, right? 327.4. So I'll just put that answer right here. 327.4 Kelvin. Okay. Now we're ready. Let's see. So I got one times... 29.468 equals, we're looking for that density, so I'm just going to label that as x. Next comes the r value, 0 0.08, um, oh, whoa, oh, oh. this should be 0 0.082. There we go, 0 0.08206, and then times it by that Kelvin value, 327.4. And now we want to just solve for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull over all the stuff and get rid of the x, right? So I'm going to divide each side by the 0 0.08206. That goes on this side, 8206. And then I'm also going to divide by the 327.4. You could also do this in multiple steps if you want. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to plug everything in you know, in one shot on the calculator. And now we should get an x value. 
There we go. So let's see. 29.468 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 327.4. Drum roll, please. Let's do, I guess let's do three sig figs. Maybe pull it out a little bit more. So maybe one point, eh, who cares, right? Who cares about sig figs? 1.09. Six, we'll say 1.09683 is what I get. And remember, that's density. And if we're using this formula, the density is always going to be in grams per liter. So that's the unit here, grams per liter. And we're done with this. That's the density of the hot air balloon. And remember, it just had to be less dense than the atmosphere. That's why it travels upward into the sky. All right. So hopefully that helps, guys. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Stick around for letter E. I'll see you in a few. Bye-bye.